how to find the best trades, how to find the best entries and how to find the best targets with the best candlestick trading strategies. Hey and welcome back to a new video. Today I've prepared a special candlestick special where we're going to talk about the best entries, how to find the best trades, how to find the best targets and everything else that you need to know when it comes to candlestick trading. And of course, I really rely on your support. So make sure to subscribe, make sure to like and to leave a comment below this video. Thank you for the support and let's get into the video. So I've prepared a few chart studies step by step and I will show you entries, exits and everything else that you need to know when it comes to managing your trades with candlesticks. So here we are looking at a trending market that is currently showing you something like a head and shoulders. You can see we have the right, uh, the left shoulder here. The head and the right shoulder is currently just forming. You could have said maybe there is also a right shoulder in here and then if you consider this your right shoulder you are looking at a fake out. The fake out is happening with a pin bar. So we're taking out the previous highs. So everybody who's taking the short with the, the previous head and shoulders around here or here will have their stop loss just above the right shoulder. That is how most people approach their trades. And then this uh, spike will trigger the stops, will get those out. And um, the people who know how to read such pin bars in the context of head and shoulders will then start looking for shorts. So let's try and see what we can do with this. So we apply a Fibonacci from point A above here to the point B here. And you can see the point C, the, the pin bar is happening right at the 38.2 level. So a great, great um, confluence factor. And people either then trade the pin bar directly when the market breaks the pin bar. Some people wait for another candle to show you some bearishness. This is a this is a concept that we will explore later called deceleration and acceleration. So you can see after the strong bullish bar, the momentum really died down, just gave you a little um, pin bar. And then the next candle was acceleration is a, a little bit of a larger bearish candle. So looking for a short entry around here. And if you're looking for a short entry with the help of the Fibonacci's, you usually target the 138 or the 161. If you are a very aggressive trader or if you use maybe a trailing stop loss, you could even try to catch all the way uh, until the 200 um, Fibonacci extension by trailing the stop loss behind you. And this is what happened. You can see we have the A to B to C move. Here's the pin bar that we looked at. This was then the, the acceleration away from the pin bar. The market hit the 138 very precisely, traded a little bit around it and then even went on to the 161 and it now looks like it's going for the bonus round. So looking for pin bars at fake out areas, looking for pin bars at a Fibonacci retracement can be a great trading strategy. After you've, after you've seen such a pin bar, you can even go down to a lower time frame and to uh, further fine tune your entry. We will see that later on in another example. Here we have another pin bar at a double top with a fake out. So the market was in an uptrend here. Here's where the up uptrend um, stopped first. And then the market traded around the previous high point. And here is where the market tried to make a breakout attempt. You can see how strong the market really pushed into the previous high. And then the next candle was a pin bar, but not just a, a regular pin bar, a fake out pin bar because the pin bar went all the way above the previous highs. That's where most people will have their will have their stops. If you follow regular or standard uh, technical analysis, you will see that most people always have their stops above the previous high because that's where they think the, the stop loss is safe. But sometimes when you have those fake outs, those will target the, the, the stops. And if you see something like that, it is a very, very good idea to look for shorts away from the pin bar, away from the fake out area, because it shows you that the market was not able to break above a previous high. It did look quite strong here. The price action did look quite strong here, but the, the fake out tells you that it's not the case. And you can see when we target the previous lows, that's where the market then collapsed to. So this is how it looked on the, on the pin bar. Here you can see this is the previous low with a very aggressive target. 
some people may have targeted this and you can see the price immediately collapsed back into the lows and now it's giving you here a one, two, a triple bottom and the triple bottom is then the signal to really get out of a short if you're still holding your short. So fake outs as we've seen in this and the previous example, fake outs at key price levels is a very, very um, powerful trading strategy, especially when it comes with a good candlestick signal. Here we're looking at a pin bar at another low with another fake out. So we're not only going to look at pin bars, we are going to progress to other candlestick patterns going forward um, soon. But the pin bar uh, with a fake out is really, really a powerful trading tool and a trading strategy. So here the market was in a clear downtrend, a very strong push here. But after this huge push to the downside, the market never, never found any any more or any additional selling uh, interest. So although it looked like there were a lot of sellers in here, actually afterwards the market showed you that there are not many sellers in here and the market just went sideways. It was never able to break the lows. Here we have a fake out with a nice pin bar and you can see when we apply some technical analysis, you can see that this pattern looks like a, a triangle or a wedge pattern. When we connect the highs with the trend line, we can really nicely confine the price action and we could use here the gap close as a target. Very often when you see a gap close, so close to the current price um, and you get a, a trade opportunity into the direction of the gap, you can use a gap close as your target. And for the trade trigger, you can wait for the market to break out out of this trend line and of this uh, triangle. So that's the idea behind this. You wait for the market to break out of the triangle and then you may target such a gap close. And this is what happens. The market came in here, closed the gap after the strong uh, breakout of the triangle and that is how it was played. Um, the, the pin bar together with this exhaustion here gave the hint that the bulls are almost ready to take control. Now we are using a triple spike um, and the, the second and the third candle are even doji. So in the first spike it still looked like, like the market was in a very very strong uptrend and the, the candle was really extremely large. It was even, yeah, when we look back, it was the largest candle during this whole uptrend. And that is very, very common. Often before um, a reversal, it will look like the market is at the strongest. Here is then the last attempt from the bulls to break higher. And afterwards, the bulls completely withdraw. The bulls withdraw. We have two consecutive dojis, two con uh, dojis with a spike where the candle wick to the upside is much larger than the one to the downside, which tells us that there was an attempt for the bulls three times, one, two, three times to continue the rally, but the bears always stepped in and pushed the price down. So this is a clear exhaustion signal. This is a 12 hour chart and you can find those patterns on all, on all the timeframes. This is how the same chart, so this is the US dollar Canadian 12 hour, this is the US dollar Canadian one hour, this is how the triple top looks like on the one hour time frame. So this is the exact same price action we can see on the lower time frame, we can very nicely see here this double top and after this double top you can see this and this lower highs. So we have two consecutive lower highs which is very very important. Also to the downside we have a very nicely defined support level. So if we have the bias from the last picture, from this one that we are looking for a short, then we can go down to the one hour and wait for a breakout out of this pattern. This is really, really important. Wait for the breakout out of this pattern and then you can target the previous highs and lows um, as your target. So for example, here could have been a target. Here you have a previous support area and then here the bottom of the, the uptrend. So this is um, how you could approach this. And this is how it looks on an even lower time frame. So now we are seeing the, the support level is broken here. So this is the support level that we are looking on the one hour. Now we see the same support level on the 15 minute. We see the breakout, we see the pullback. So whether you trade a, a breakout um, strategy or a pullback, there are two, two options for you to get into this. And then you're just targeting the last swing point, as I said, so as I said uh, in the previous picture on the one hour time frame, this is what we are targeting, the first area of support. And this is the swing um, point as support as our target now. So we are looking for to capture this part after the breakout. And you can see the market broke out, went into the support area. 
after it had completed a break and retest pattern. So really nice how we can go all the way from the 12 hour all the way down to the 15 minute to fine tune our, tar our, our trade. And we can see when we recap, this is the, the bearish bias on the 12 hour. We see that we have exhaustion on the 12 hour. We see we have a very nicely defi defined pattern on the one hour with a good support level. Then on the lowest time frame, we wait for the break and the retest. You can either trade the break or the retest or both. And then you use support and resistance as your target. Very simple and very straightforward. And this is then how it looks finally. We have another one. This time we're looking at an engulfing pattern at a previous high point. So here's where the market stalled the previous time. Very important resistance level, very important swing point. And very often when the market moves into those, it is worth paying attention to because sometimes you will get great um, setups. In this example, you have an engulfing pattern at a previous high. You can see this bearish candle it is completely outside of the previous bullish candle. Also, the body of the candlestick is very strong and very large. So you can see the market closed all the, may all the way almost at the absolute bottom of the candle, which is a strong bearish signal. And this is how it looks on the four hour time frame. So this is the 12 hour higher time frame. This is the four hour lower time frame. Now we can draw support and resistance. This is the engulfing candle that we saw on the previous, um, on the higher time frame. We have a support and resistance flip zone. Resistance turns into support. And then when we look for targets, we can look for previous support areas as well. Here we clearly have the first major support area. Here we have another swing point and then here another one as well. And the idea is that we just go to the lower time frame, the four hour in this case, and we wait for the breakout below this support and resistance flip zone. We don't want to trade into this obviously, so we want to wait for the market to clear this area. And then you can pick your target. Um, you can choose between a, a close target, which should be very simple and easy to reach. Or if you go for a wider target, the market may have a, a harder time reaching it. And this is what happens afterwards. You can see the market broke the previous support and resistance flip zone. It went to the first target very quickly. It went to the second target very quickly, but then it took a lot of time to get to the third target. And that's the key point for this scenario. The, long, the, the further away your target is, the wider your targets are away from your entry, the harder it is for the price to reach it. And also your win rate will go down because the market is just not able to reach the, the larger and the wider targets as easily. So this is something that you need to consider in your own trading. Do you use wide targets? Then your win rate will go down. Do you use close targets like the first one here? The market will reach it quite easily. So something to think about for your own trading. Here we have a, a very interesting ABC pattern. I got a lot of interest in my last ABC video. So here's another example. The market was in a downtrend. And here it seems like the market turned around. Here we have our point A. We use our Fibonacci tool. We draw it from A to B. This is the first retracement here that we see after this long downtrend. So we s use A to B and then you can see the C move came to an end here at a 61.8. And even more important or more interestingly even is that at the C point, the market almost gave us here this engulfing pattern. You can see this candlestick is almost engulfing the previous candlestick, which is a good bullish signal. And how do you trade it? You could go down to a lower time frame. You could um, trade it directly on this time frame. So you could wait for the market to break into a new high or you wait for the market to break above the, the B level. Um, a more aggressive approach is to enter directly after you see such a, such a candlestick trigger with this engulfing candle. And this is what happens afterwards. The market easily cleared 130, uh, 138, it easily cleared 161, and it even made it all the way back to 261. Of course, not always will the market make it all the way to the, to the bonus round of 261, and 138 and 161 are usually the safer options that the price will have a way easier time reaching it. But this is how you generally play the Fibonacci retracement and the ABC pattern. You look for A to B move, you wait for the C to give you some type of um, pattern, in this case an almost engulfing candle, and then you look for bullish triggers into um, the direction of the new trend. Here we have another example which I am absolutely starting to love more and more. This is something that I started trading in my own trading, or I use it as a confluence. We are looking at a very important support and resistance area in here. You can see resistance turn support and support and support. And then the market came back into the level. 
tried to break it, but it didn't succeed. And more interestingly is how, how did the market behave? And I, I call it rounding off. In the previous video, I called it uh, deceleration and acceleration. So you can see we have a very strong bearish candle here indicating a probable breakout. But the next two candles afterwards are super, super small, especially the next candle here is a doji. Very small doji shows indecision, shows a neutral phase. Then a little bit of a, a larger bullish candle, still very, very small, but larger than the doji. The third candle even larger, the fourth candle very, very, well compared to the, to the previous ones, much larger. So you can see we go from strong bearish to neutral to a little bit more bullish, a little bit more bullish to a little bit more bullish. So we see this rounding off pattern and we can use that to find a bullish trades or we can use that to, to support our bullish bias now because it looks like the market is not able to break the, the lows. So we look for, for bullish trades. We look for bullish trades into... So when we look for targets, we're going to look for here and here's probably a support resistance area. You can see a resistance turns support, turns resistance, or we're going even for the all-time high here, or not all-time high, but the, the, the highest high in this chart context. So there are two options again, a close target, which should be quite easy to reach, or the larger target that's far away. And this is what happens. The market cleared the first target easily. You can see here's the level that I was talking about. It cleared the level easily. It didn't make it to the second target um, initially. You can see there was a significant drawdown and then the market made the second push into the higher target. So this is really something to take away from this video as well, besides the candlestick reading, is that the larger and the further away your target is, the harder it is for the price to reach it. And usually what I see in my trading with our students is that using targets that are closer, that are easier to reach is m way more beneficial for newer traders who are just starting out to build confidence. And that's it for this um, candlestick special. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope there's something you can take away. If you like it, make sure to leave a comment below the video. Make sure to leave a like and please subscribe to my channel. Until the next time, happy trading.